This is Alexander Clare, co-founder and CEO at Recoder, an award-winning NGO that provides upskilling programs for underdeserved and displaced talent. For years, Recoder was struggling to find the best solution for their marketing website. They tried everything from Squarespace, WordPress, and they even built a really custom-coded website. But nothing seemed to work. Ultimately, they landed on Webflow. Rebuilding and relaunching their website from scratch with the help of our team a couple of months ago. I wanted to personally sit down with Ali and learn more about their journey. And in this video, we'll go over the pros and also the cons of each solution they used and hear if Recoded has finally found its go-to platform or if they're moving to another solution yet again. So, Recoded's first website was built on Squarespace and I wanted to know how that worked out for them, what was good and why they decided to switch it. I think the first, it was the first site that we, we ever built. So that was back in probably 2016. And overall, I would say that the experience using it was positive, but a bit limiting. But at the time, it kind of worked for my needs. So I was a first time founder with absolutely no technical expertise. And I was really looking for the easiest possible solution to kind of spin up a website really quickly. And it felt like very fast and approachable in the sense that it had ready made templates, I didn't have to hire anyone. It had a lot of like drag and drop functionality, which was really easy to kind of quickly learn and then build a really simple website. Over time, it became limiting in the sense that like it very much looked like a Squarespace website and we were branding ourselves as you know, a tech focused organization. And so a lot of our participants and people on the team who with development expertise were kind of like, why are we using Squarespace? And it really was limiting from a design perspective. So we were very constrained by the templates themselves. Um, it wasn't very customizable um, in terms of, yeah, being able to, to work outside of the, the very basic designs and also very scalable. Like it felt very clunky as like a large scale website with multiple pages. It was within the kind of domain of Squarespace. So being able to embed different services that wasn't always really possible. As you can see, Alexander was pretty happy with Squarespace while they were small. But this changed when they started to scale. Squarespace was easy to manage for her and other non-technical team members. But it started to feel limited as the company grew and they felt like they needed to migrate to another platform that would give them a lot more flexibility. She mentioned this was the path many brands usually take, which was really understandable. Not every startup has the tech power that can help with marketing right away. Settling for limiting solutions that offer templates and easy drag and drop is often the most logical choice. As the site starts growing and growing and growing, the company starts growing and many marketers start to realize that solutions like Squarespace or Wix might not be the best to support their needs. Then, Recorded team felt like they needed to go to another solution. For them, this was actually WordPress. WordPress is the biggest CMS in the world, and it's definitely something that everybody in the industry uses at least once in their lives, as was the case, of course, with Recorded. Moving forward, I mean, like, uh, from Squarespace to WordPress, kind of how was the transition? Because, I mean, like, half of the world is using WordPress, and, like, it definitely had some advantages moving from Squarespace, but it also probably had some disadvantages that made you made uh, kind of to create a custom platform afterwards. So I would love to understand that part as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like, it was fairly flexible, and I think, like Squarespace, it had a lot of different themes and plugins, which was good. So it was, like, customizable to a certain extent because we never had developers kind of customizing the, the website. We were just using ready-made themes. I think in terms of the, the downsides, it was just, you know, the reliance on plugins for absolutely every single feature that we had to, to use. And that eventually became quite clunky and difficult to manage the updates, troubleshoot if something broke. And it always felt to me a little bit complicated in the sense of like, you know, we're hosting it on a different platform. Like it wasn't an all in one simple solution, which I actually really missed from using Squarespace and which I feel like you, you get a lot more in with Webflow. Like you have that, um, the ability to have like it more secure, everything's just on one platform rather than having to rely on multiple different um, elements coming together. And 
Yeah, it just felt more difficult for me um, personally to to manage the website, which I I really do enjoy, and became difficult to do more customized design. None of the developers, like as we slowly grew as a team and had technical people on the team, they also weren't like they weren't PHP developers, and so it still came with kind of limitations of like what we could actually do. Even though WordPress provided uh, with more flexibility compared to Squarespace. It still fell short as an ideal solution for the working website. The biggest issue that Ali and her team encountered was dependency on plugins. As it's often the case with WordPress websites, for every new feature they wanted to implement, they needed another plugin. And with time, this became very clunky, hard to manage, and also really hard to update. It was a big hit on their budget, as they were never sure how much resources they will need to maintain their website. As WordPress was the second website builder that didn't work out for them, their team decided to take an alternative route and build a new website from scratch in custom code. And I think I got swayed, actually, as a non-technical founder, everybody was like, oh, let's just build it ourselves. Like, the you kind of come to a head at a certain point, you're like, this is not doing what I want it to do, and they're like, I think we just need to build it from scratch. And um, I think I got really swayed by that. I was like, yeah, maybe we do. We just need to fully build our own designs on Figma, build it from scratch and do like a hard coded website and move away from all of these no code platforms and reliance on all these different um, kind of solutions. And so we decided yeah as we had more of a technical team to do our own custom website which i yeah i really regret <laughs> it was a big waste of time <laughs> um it was really long and complicated process actually to like come up with the designs it took probably three times longer than I anticipated to actually develop the website from scratch. And then we ended up with a website and I didn't quite understand that it would have like no backend and that it wouldn't have a CMS. And so it was really challenging at that point, I think for us to kind of navigate the website, but it was also a little bit of that like opportunity cost thing where we, we kept it probably for 18 months because we were like so much time went in to designing it and developing it um, in-house ultimately for a solution that didn't really work but it felt like you know you'd already put that time and effort in it, it was kind of a, a difficult pill to swallow that we we actually just needed to scrap it and start again but I think like it was really challenging in a sense of like, you know, what I love about WordFlow is that you, you can have a design element and then make it a component and duplicate that over multiple pages. So everything looks exactly the same on every page. That wasn't the case on a hard coded website. So like from a design audit perspective, I would go through and be like, oh my gosh, this border is, is off. This color is not quite the color. This font is not working and you had to manually update that one by one. Like our developers needed to go on and, and update the code and check if something was working. If we needed to launch a new product, it took so long because we'd have to yeah redevelop the whole page. It just, it felt like a really slow, it was slowing us down at quite a pivotal moment of growth for us as an organization. It was like during the pandemic when you know, online education was really taking off. We were scaling very fast and it felt like we had this really clunky solution, which everybody was just getting very frustrated with because our comms team could no longer go in and add a blog post or update copy. I was getting so frustrated from all the like design flaws and like I have such a, um, a strong attention to detail and I would just spend so much time doing design audits which is like absolutely not what you want to do as a, a founder in a growing organization. A common mistake that non-technical marketers make is having a hard-coded website that absolutely 100% relies on developers. There are multiple problems that many of our other clients have encountered with hard-coded websites that Ali mentioned. Every single change does take a lot of time. There is a pretty big dependency on the development team to make changes and to create 
need to pages which directly affects your time to market and a lot of resources are needed to complete the overall project when building a custom coded website you will often need to put a lot of money and effort this can be really time consuming but also have a big opportunity cost factors as ali mentioned i mean you're not gonna get anything out of the box so like you're not gonna get that out of the box cms solution with custom coded websites there's no integrated cms solution so you will still need to opt for a headless cms which ali learned like in a really hard way and then on the design consistency, the additional thing that Ali mentioned was not being able to achieve design consistency and doing uh, design audits over and over and over again, which is not something you would want your CEO to spend their time on their day-to-day -day work. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are instances where custom coded solutions like with a headless CMS is gonna beat any other website builder. But if you're looking to use your marketing website to scale your business and move quickly, this was definitely not the way to go for them. Now, it's interesting that Ali and the team didn't really know how to fix this problem. They knew they needed a good solution that uh, they will not need to revisit in the future, but they weren't sure how to do that exactly. And that's why this time they decided not to pick a builder, but instead to find a partner and then I'll let them do the heavy lifting. The funny thing is that at this point, they didn't know much about Webflow actually. You mentioned that you were like going through maybe like tens of different vendors. So at that point, like were you 100% decided, hey, we want to build this on Webflow? Or did you just, uh, were you considering about kind of, hey, we want to maybe do this Webflow with WordPress and kind of, what made you kind of choose Webflow as a platform in that process uh, in order to kind of kind of build your website on the platform itself kind of, when you were evaluate, evaluating all vendors them, themselves? I personally had never heard of Webflow when we, when we found you guys and then started exploring it. And I was a little skeptical at first because having been through so many different solutions, I was like, do we really want to try another um, solution? And... I think it was actually like our comms team that did a lot of due diligence on Webflow itself um, as we were, were choosing the agency and we were kind of debating um, whether or not to go back to something more like WordPress. But it also felt very outdated in a way, like going back to WordPress, we were like, is, is this still relevant? Like we had a lot of issues when we were using this and I was also quite hesitant to kind of yeah go back um after time but what was super important to us was that we needed a platform that had a cms which we didn't have with the custom coded one and really regretted and it needed to have for multiple people to be able to log on to the website and collaborate kind of seamlessly with kind of some of those elements that i loved about squarespace in the sense of like you could create design elements quite quickly or duplicate content and stuff like that create pages quickly from a yeah a no code perspective but having way more functionality as well so in the end i think it it really worked out us um using webflow but it was actually kind of finding you guys as an agency that led us to decide 100% let's go with this solution. And after, like Webflow was the best solution for Recruited because it combined all the benefits their kind of previous solutions offered, but all of them were under one roof. Webflow allowed Ali and their marketing team to have the flexibility of changing plenty of things on the website without having to rely on developers as it was with Squarespace in the beginning, but this didn't come at the expense of not being able to add custom code because they could do that as well. That's something I don't think is advertised enough about Webflow. The level of customization is as big as you want it to be. Marketers can do their job and developers are there to assist them, but it's not the other way around. And honestly, that's the only thing that matters when you're a marketer or you're in any other position that comes in contact with a website's content and design. And finally, we spoke about if there's anything Ali was currently missing in Webflow and how Webflow's price tag compares to other solutions they've been using in the past. Yeah, and like in that case, uh, I mean, like, have you noticed any of the things that are maybe missing on Webflow, like since like, maybe moving from the custom coded solution and going on kind of WordPress? And the other question is like, in, is in terms of pricing, kind of was the pricing okay? Because I know this is a big topic when you're paying for a solution, which is all in one. Uh, kind of, are you completely kind of fine with Webflow being a little bit maybe more expensive to host than any of the other platforms? I, in terms of what's missing, I don't think anything's missing. For me, it has like a lot of the best elements that the other platforms didn't have, or they have, like I would say it's like a much more functional kind of grown up version of something like a, a Squarespace with a lot more ability to like customize and do creative design work than, than some of the other, um, 
platforms. So I think for me, it doesn't, it has everything that we need. Um, in terms of pricing, yes, it was more expensive than WordPress in the sense of like upfront, it looks like WordPress is, is free, but actually we ended up spending probably close to the same amount that we were, we would spend on Webflow because we were paying for additional hosting, additional security stuff, multiple plugins. So like all in all, it was kind of slowly adding up over time anyway, even if like it seemed like a free solution because we were getting, you know, paying for themes and, and stuff like that as well. I actually really l prefer everything all in one, like just knowing upfront, this is how much it costs on an annual basis um, with everything included, rather than the slow drip of like, oh, this is actually gonna be extra and extra and extra and kind of not having that transparency upfront. That's something that's like quite personal for me, but um, all in all, I think if you're looking for a website with that kind of level of customization with, you know, more than 10 pages, it is going to cost a little bit. And I, I think that the pricing is actually pretty reasonable. In conclusion, Recoded find its go-to solution with Webflow. And in Ali's words, they're not planning on moving to another platform anytime soon. I wanted to thank Alexandra once again for taking the time to share their website journey with us. As Recoded is an amazing company that exists with a very noble cause. Make sure to go to their website and if possible, donate whatever you can do to support their work. So. What do you guys think about the Recoded's choice? Do you have a similar story of switching builders until reaching the right one? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to hear the full 25 minute interview with Ali and explore this topic further, click the first link in the description to access our on-demand webinar completely for free.